Hi, this is Bob from Insidium. In this video, we're going to create some custom tool palettes inside Cinema 4D. These can then be docked in your interface so you've got quick access to commonly used features. Let's start building some custom palettes then so we can have some nice shortcuts to access our Insidium tools, a bit like these uh, standard Cinema 4D menus. For example, look, here is our primitives menu. If we click on the primitives icon, click and hold, we can then look at all of the primitive objects and bring one into our scene. So that's cool. And we can set this up for our for Insidium tools, any plugins that you're using or any of the other Cinema 4D commands that you use that, that doesn't already have its own kind of shortcut icon so here's how we do it we're going to go to window customization to the command manager and let's just bring that over here and click on edit palettes and now what we can do if we wanted to add another command to these existing palettes of icons we can you just search for the command here so look then these are all of the commands in cinema 4d whether it's the native stuff plugins whatever so if i type in nx Look, here's a list of all of the Nexus commands. Cool. So let's say that we use NX Fluids all the time. I can just drag this NX Fluids into this existing palette, let go, and there I've got my shortcut icon to access NX Fluids. Cool. If I want to get rid of that or any of these other existing ones from a palette when we're in edit palette mode, I just double click. And it disappears so that's one way of introducing individual commands into existing palettes cool uh, the problem with that is if let's just switch off that and switch off the editing we also have these uh, icons that contain kind of sub commands look so here are our two text objects and you can see that because they have this little arrow here or look our primitives menu it is the cube icon but if we click and hold we get the uh, option to bring in any of these um uh, commands to bring in these primitive objects and a lot of the insidium tools have these kind of sub menus so let's get those set up we're going to go to window customization command manager again let's bring it over here and we're going to click on edit palettes again which um, makes them highlighted and they're now editable but we want to make a new palette of icons so to do that we're going to click here on new palette here is our new palette. Now we can start building this by dragging in commands to this palette here. But what I like to do is dock it in the place in which we're gonna put it in our interface uh, first and then build it from there. So what we do is grab the dots on the side of this empty palette. If we click and hold, now look, we're able to drop that wherever this line appears. So what I wanna do is drop it next to these default ones let's just move this interface over a bit so here is our new area for our new palette that we're creating cool now we could start searching for the commands in here like we did before or we can add them in a different way which will also enable us to bring in these kind of menu ones that have got sub commands so let's go to our insidium tools and let's say we want to make one for mesh tools here which has all of these sub objects so the way we do it is we undock the uh, top menu by just clicking on the buttons at the top and now it's undocked and now we can grab our mesh tools options drag it drop it and there we have a mesh tools icon and you can see look it's got the little arrow which means that it's got all of those sub objects as part of it cool so that's the mesh tools one we also want to do a let's do a fused um nexus one actually we use the nexus tools a lot so what we'll need to do is come out of here go into insidium again we need to look for the nexus sub menu so it's not in this one it's in x particles and here it is nexus so let's undock this one let go drag in our nexus tools and there we have our nexus menu as well very nice um and let's just whilst we've got this one open i use emitter a lot so let's put an emitter in there and let's put an xp cache in there as well because i use those a lot okay so now if if you want to you can tidy this palette up by including some of these different dividers look so let's do one of these we'll do a group separator to separate our nexus tools from our um 
uh, mesh tools tools so yeah that looks good okay and then we'll come out of here and so obviously you can build as many different icons in your palette you could have a separate palette for each um fuse tool like one for particles one for terraform one for teo it's entirely up to you let's just have a look at a couple more of the options though so with these two at the top that if we click and hold we then have all of the kind of the the sub commands you can see that this is using the top icon as our kind of parent icon if i click and hold that look it's using the dual graph one but then if I pick a mesh tool select to bring into my object, now the icon changes to mesh tool select to the last one you picked. And this isn't great when you're using icons. You want the icon to be the same so you can kind of recognize it immediately and you learn to know that is the icon for that, that set of tools. But we can do that. What we'll do is, look, let's pick one that we want to be our mesh tools. I like this inset icon for mesh tools. That, to me, says mesh tools because it's showing you kind of polygons and outer polys. And we want to lock that as the parent icon for this subset. So the way we do that is right-click on the icon, and we can go to, look, lock icon. Click on that. And now we've locked that icon. If we go in, we can pick a shell gen. We've got a shell gen in the scene, but it's kept that icon as our parent icon. Cool. Let's do the same thing for Nexus. We're going to change this to, what do I want for my Nexus tools? I like this NX Attract. That says Nexus to me. Good. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to lock icon. And now that is locked in. Excellent. And then there's loads of stuff you can do. Look, if we right click uh, away from the icons, but in the palette, We've got the various different palette options. So if you wanted smaller icons, look, we can go to little diddy tiny icons, should you wish. Or you can go to, obviously, the bigger ones. Um, you can show the text under the icon, which will say, you know, XP emitter. That, for me, takes up way too much uh, room in the interface and almost defeats the object of having the icons in the first place. So I wouldn't do that. But look, you can show text and text below icons, should you wish. Um, you can have rows of icons. So you could have one, two, three different columns and rows. Um, lots of editable options to sort out your palettes how you want them. But that's the basics of getting a custom palette in the Cinema 4D interface and just finally if you want this um, always to be saved obviously you don't want to build this every time you need to save this as a layout and to do that you can go to um, window customization and if you want to um, have this just as your start layout to include this as the default startup layout you can just save as startup layout or you can save layout as, which will give you, this is a kind of a custom layout, which will be choosable from this list of layouts at the top, should you save it. And that's how we can get these nice, cool custom palettes with the various different commands and tools that you use regularly in your Cinema 4D interface.